Do you think it's possible to do a deal with the Taliban that doesn't have any central, centralized structure, they're disseminated, there's no centralized command? Do you think it's possible? You've studied this organization, you've interacted with them on a daily basis, you've fought against them, you've been effective against them. Do you think it's possible at all to do uh, a deal or negotiate with them, or do you think that's just a waste of time? And the last question, why did you allow Rolling Stone magazine, no for, known for its left-leaning views, to travel around and talk with you and AIDS? Since in general, over the years, you really didn't allow interviews and general portrayers too, and others, uh, just briefly, yeah. both. Sure. Let's talk about the Taliban first. Um, the Taliban are really Talibans. Mm -hmm. There's nobody who could get all the Taliban, negotiate right. with them, and deliver them all. It's, it's much more local than that. Mm -hmm. And it's evolved from the young, idealistic people of 1994 into a more wizened and a more uh, opportunistic group of groups. So you almost got to cut a deal with each of these separate groups. Now, I do think that's possible. I think that many of those groups would be willing to, to come back in. So you think basically you could sit down with 10 different, the major 10 different tribes, groups, the Pashtuns, et cetera, and you think it's possible to, for them to meet, some of them to meet us yeah. a partial way I there. don't think it'll be that formal. I think okay. it'll be accommodations locally. Now, here's a problem, though. Let me make sure everybody understands. You have a country torn by 30 plus years of war People have different equities now, and so if you have the Taliban who've been off fighting and they're from a certain area and they're all from, a certain, from different areas, and they suddenly come back and you say, we want you to come back into society. Here you go, come back in. And they go, well, we need a place to live. We need a livelihood. We need respect. You can legally cover that part, but they say we need land to make a living. We need jobs. We need these kind of things. Suddenly, all the people who are there, you're giving somebody's land to them. So you've got stakeholders who have gotten ensconced in it. So suddenly you're not just dealing with the challenge of convincing the Taliban to do it. You're, you're trying to get the people who are going to be impacted by their reintegration in a negative way. And so that's a difficult one. It, it's layers of complexity people don't uh, understand, and, and it makes it hard. Um, on Rolling Stone magazine, the, I had not done much press. When I was in right. JSOC, I'd done none because it was classified. Um, General Petraeus had done a boatload of it, so he was right. really good at it. When I took Afghanistan, I had to do a boatload of it. You remember I did 60 minutes? I didn't want to do that. I did all of those things because what we needed to do was to get people to support the effort, to understand and support the effort. We were trying to convince people in the summer of 2009, after eight years, that it's a whole new ball game. We can get this thing turned around. We can make progress. We had to change the mindset of Afghans, Pakistanis, and Western nations. So it required us to do a, a real effort to inform people about what was happening. Uh, and I did more interviews, more things than uh, I would have ever dreamed of my life doing. Rolling Stone was just one of another. Mm -hmm. It was brought to me. It said, OK, here's another target audience. We want to do a limited embed with this guy. He was only around me a few times, uh, but a limited embed. So it was just one of a whole group of things. It wasn't a big deal. This isn't the big Rolling Stone article, but it was to hit a different audience. 